Hi, I received a lot of messages from people that want to follow the same journey as I did uh, on becoming a CCIE on the enterprise infrastructure uh, track of Cisco. And so I decided to put this video where I'm going to show you which certifications I did, which path I took that allowed me to get to the place I am right now. And I will also share which path I recommend if you want to get into networking or if you want to move to other track on the Cisco certifications, uh, whether you plan to become a CCIE or find a better job opportunity. So I'm going to show which ones are the best as related to not only the certification, but the skills that you have to develop and improve uh, after some time. So first I'm going to explain why I got into networking and when I started. Uh, initially, I did a very basic course uh, for networking uh, where you learn things like how to connect devices to computers, how to make the cable, different types of cables uh, like CAT5, CAT6. So it was a very, very basic course. And um, after doing that, that course, I then took the Cisco uh, Net Academy because at that time I heard that becoming a CCIE would allow you to get the 100K. So 100k you had just you just have to study for a year i thought yeah why not right and the our approach that i took was to first start with cisco net academy i had already realized that i have to learn first in short time so i don't like courses or training that last like for a month or a year and it took me around the year because the training I was taking uh, didn't have enough students to open the other classes. So that's the reason why it took me a, a year to finish that course. After taking that course, the Cisco Net Academy, I scheduled the exam to take the CCNE exam and I failed the first time. And I was wondering how come I studied a lot I, I understood the concepts, I could explain the operation, the different device, uh, because it took me too much time and some of the concepts I forgot. So then I decided to split the CCNA exam in two parts. And first I did the ICND1 and then I did the ICND2. So then I became CCNA. And then I decided to move to the CCN, CCNP and first I did the CCNP routing and then the CCNP switching and then the CCNP troubleshooting. And I believe this was in different years. So we can actually take a look at my Credly page. Uh, here you can see the different certifications I took and I became a CCNA on the routing switching uh, let me see, it was in 2014 and so on the 2015, that's when I became CCNP on routing switching. So during that period of time from 2014 to 2015, uh, I was doing the exams uh, to become a CCNP and I failed. <laughs> some of these exams and now probably in another video I'm going to share this with you and so on 2015 um, I was thinking whether I should continue to CCIE or not uh, and I believe it took me two years uh, to move to CCIE go time because during that time I was doing other certification as well uh, as you can see here so I went to other tracks like security, uh, cyber operations and data center. And only on 2019, that's where I kind of decided really to go into CCIE and I passed the CCIE written exam on 2019. And you already know the story that I passed the lab exam on 2021. So that's the time frame we can say that took me from 2013 or 2012 uh, 
to get into Cisco certifications and until uh, 2021 to become a CCIE. As you can see, this option, this path, it took a lot of time and a lot of money. Okay. And I don't recommend anyone to follow the same path. Okay. I really don't recommend. Uh, if you have enough money to waste, okay. But if not, you probably want to save your money. You want to save your time. So if I were to do it over from scratch, which approach would I take? Whether I have some experience with networking or not, even if I'm coming from a different background. Okay. So the first thing I would do is to take one of these Cisco free courses. Okay. Like network essentials. Uh, this is also related to Cisco networking Academy. And the purpose of this training is to get you started without pressure and you will learn the basics around networking. So what is a router? What is a switch? What is an IP address? How things uh, communicate? Uh, uh, for me, it's very hard to explain to other people like I'm a network engineer and people don't kind of understand what is the role of network engineer because most of people don't understand how their devices, the computer, um, the phone are using the internet. So the network essentials, uh, if you want to become a professional into networking, that's the way to start. And by this time, I would assume that you already have an idea on where you want to work because it doesn't make sense for me, at least if you want to get into networking and you don't have a clear idea, or at least a vision on which type of role you want to land, which type of company you want to work. Okay. You have to understand this, the Cisco certifications, they are for professionals. So it's not like, uh, the courses that you have at school, like you can just take the exam and then I passed high and no, you should take this approach. Like you want to be a professional uh on this track you want to be a professional whether it's networking whether it's security whether it's wireless okay you want to become a professional and cisco just collect these requirements these different topics that they believe are the required for a professional at different levels and this can be from ccna ccnp uh towards ccie now by taking the networking sessions you will be investing just time to learn okay uh back on let's say five or ten years ago it was very hard to build your own labs to test what you're learning so besides packet tracer and and that's a very um restricted tool because that's an emulator uh you couldn't do much but nowadays we have gns3 we have even g we have uh ptnet we have cisco lab so there are a lot of different tools that you can learn from uh if you're taking the theory from a course like this and then you can take the next step not taking the ccna exam i know that it might sound counterintuitive but you don't need the ccna exam especially if you want to be a professional with the networking sessions from my perspective you have enough foundation to jump right into one of the cisco uh professional exams okay because at this point you already know what a router you already understand the basics around uh networking so you don't have to learn anything else besides this to get into networking as long as you understand communication that's it and so what you want to do is to focus on certifications or one of the tracks that most likely will allow you to join different companies let's say for instance an rc okay i believe that an rc is one of the most complete uh, tracks right now it covers all you need uh, related to networking uh, either from basic to advanced concepts and if you start correctly for this certification 
believe me, you will be more than qualified uh, than one person that has been working this for two or three years because you're going to interact with technologies like OSPF, ERGRP, BGP, okay? And trust me, those are the same technologies that you see on CCNA, on CCIE. The, the routing is the same, okay? You don't learn more than this. And most of the companies, okay, they might use ERGRP or OSPF. Bigger companies, they will use uh, BGP or ISS, but we are talking about big companies and if you're getting to these companies already uh they will know okay based on your background uh where you where they're going to place you uh, unless you already have a clear view on where you want to land but most likely those companies they will have a place for you where you can actually learn the hands-on uh on uh on an enterprise or in a service provider environment okay so that would be my take on going from zero starting from zero into a place that allows you to be ready to go on the marketplace now if you want to take the next step on becoming an expert then i would recommend to take as well the encore exam okay and then go to our the ccie lab exam and if your approach or if your goal is actually to become a CCIE, actually I would uh, reduce the steps on just taking the networking essentials, then taking the enterprise encore, and then getting to the CCIE lab exam. It might look like, oh, just pass the exam and you'll be ready, you'll be a professional. No, no, don't get me wrong, okay? And that's where most of the network engineers get it wrong. They pass the exams, they get the certifications, but they don't understand how the technology works. They don't know how to apply the technology that they are supposed to be expert on. So what you want, depending on how you take this approach, is to learn with theory and hands-on experience. So a lot of labs, that will prove the concepts the theory that you're learning and the exam you just okay this is just to test that i really know this i'm really mastering my craft at least that's the approach that i would take and i'm going to show you why i believe that this approach is the most effective one uh, just by looking at two variables the time and the money invested so on the path that I took, uh, I started on, let's say, 2014 or 2013 or 2012, because first I did the Cisco Net Academy, right? And let's say just looking at the exams, how much I spent. So I have a sheet here. So let's say uh, I took the Cisco Net CAD exam and I don't remember, but let's say it was around $100 okay and then you had what the ccna exam and let's just say the exams that i pass we're not going to focus on the exams that i failed because that's also money but let's keep it short uh so let's say that for cisco net academy i spent 100 dollars. i don't remember right now how much i spent and then for ccna rns I would say that the exam costs around 250. Let's just say that's the value. And then I did CCNP routing, just say route. And I believe it was around 300 because it, I, I believe it was more expensive than the CCNA. So let's just say 300. I'm not sure at the moment. And then I did CCNP switch and it was the same value and CCNP uh, troubleshoot. Okay, let's say 300. And then you have to take the CCIE written exam and I believe it's 450. So let's say um, CCIE RNS. So that should be CCIE RNS and written. Okay, and it probably was around 400, okay. Remix and that. OK, 
okay just make it look pretty and then the lab cci rns okay so it's not rns now it's ei uh lab exam and it calls i believe 2000 okay so we're not getting too specific but let's just have an idea uh around the the numbers so what is the sum i believe should be here these are special characters okay so i have to do manually so it's just going to be the sum uh, from i believe a2 uh, to g2 okay okay so it i spent around 3650 so around and it was more than that trust me now if i were to this is the path that i took right now the path that i recommend is okay so you should start with a uh, cisco netacad so that's free okay you don't spend a dime on it and then you should take uh what is now ccnp root but let's say uh an rc and i believe actually i have this here so let me see an rc how much it's 300 okay so 300 and so if you were to spend money okay you uh, by landing just at an rc certification you should only spend 300 bucks okay and that's it even if we look at the time required to pass this exam it won't compare to uh the time i spent uh, until uh taking the ccnp road exam okay so you will save a lot of time just by taking this approach and if you take the ccnp that's the encore exam now so let me just capital and how much it costs so it's 400 okay so it would cost 400 bucks okay so you're spending what 700 uh so far and if you take the cci lab exam so let me just pass this okay and grab this here okay so you would spend a, a total of 2700 around in case you don't fail any of the exams and what i want you to look at is not only the money you'll be saving but also the time uh if you plan to go to cci lab you will require obviously more time but i wouldn't say more than a year okay as long as you have a good strategy you are uh with someone mentoring you uh something around that what i want to look at is how much money and time you are saving just to be a better professional just to become a professional into networking i would say that you can take the ccnp and nars exam in case you're starting from from scratch from netcad probably around four months that should be enough it wouldn't you wouldn't require more than that because even if you're already working on a different thing but you want to get into networking it's just a matter of how much time you plan to invest so if i work on another company and i'm only reserving around two hours to study and you have like six ten hours to study so it just means that you will learn in shorter time than i am and you'll be able to improve even faster than i will be because it's about how much time you putting you are it's about how much time you are applying for that okay so that's my take on it and let me know what you think uh what is your comments uh right in the section below and in another videos i'll be breaking down also how much it really costs to plan for a ccie lab exam okay so until the next time take care